I probably would have got around to making a knurling video uh, with my Shars knurling tool, but my buddy John Grimsmo had requested a knurling video, so I thought I'd bump it up on the list of priorities. If you haven't been to John's YouTube channel, check it out by clicking the link here. He has the same lathe already CNC converted, and he also has a CNC X2 milling machine. He recently bought a Tormach PCNC 1100 milling machine, and he's got great videos. He's very helpful, a great guy. I highly recommend uh, subscribing to his channel. Uh, before we get started, I want to show you a couple of my early examples uh, of knurling. You can see the one on the top looks pretty good, although there's a slight, uh, it's kind of a rectangular pattern. And the one on the bottom has way too many lines on it, and that's what I call cross-threading with your knurling tool. And we're going to cover that phenomenon later. Basically, what happens is you need to have the diameter of your work set up correctly proportioned to the size of your tool. And if you don't, uh, you can get too many cuts. Now, this one was set up uh, as a worst-case scenario. This is actually the last thing that I've knurled. But the knurl still came out really well, which means all of my work and research in trying to figure out how to get the correct diameter turned out to be for nothing. I'm actually going to be breaking that out into a second video. So if you like math and formulas, stay tuned. There's going to be a second knurling video coming up where we just discuss uh, the math involved in calculating correct work diameters, also the correct depth of cut, although we're not technically cutting. We'll get into that later. And uh, anyway, we're going to leave the rest of that discussion for later on. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is set up the tool height. And once you start getting it dialed in, you'll be able to slowly advance your rollers up to the work. And then moving one roller at a time kind of feel for how much drag it has against the, uh, the material. Once you get the drag leveled out uh, pretty evenly, then you know your tool height is correct. If you've got more drag on one roller than the other, then your tool height is not correct. I'm not going to cover how to raise or lower tools on a quick change tool post because if you ever uh, buy one, it's self-explanatory. Let me tell you what we're doing here. Uh, in this pass, I have a 90 degree, I have the tool set up at 90 degrees to the work. I'm doing a 25,000 step of the cut and I'm turning at 150 RPM. This is as slow as my lathe can go. You always want to go as slow as possible because on a on a knurling process, you're not really cutting, you're pushing the material. The bottom half of that is at uh, 14 thousandths per rev. So I just wanted to show you that uh, going faster is bad. Go as slow as you can. You'll notice on this one that I've got the tool canted and I'm pretty sure that was five degrees. Everything else is the same, 25 thousandths depth of cut, 150 RPM, two and a half thousandths per rev. Uh, much better results, that looks fantastic. Um, you wanna keep the tool canted at five degrees. It's easier on the tool. It's uh, better for the material because the tool more gradually engages uh, the material as it starts to push that knurl, and also the the uh, material won't deflect as much. Okay, this cut is the same as number two, except I start at 25 thousandths and then I back it down to 10 thousandths, and you can see the 10 thousandths depth of cut looks terrible. Uh, this is number four, where I go 10 thousandths, 20, 30, 40 thousandths, and you'll see the results just keep getting worse, and that's because uh, the knurls the knurling tool gets clogged up with aluminum. It was after this one I realized I should probably be using some type of lubricant. So I go with uh, WD-40 to help clean those knurls out. I, I cleaned them out anyway before I make this uh, the next uh, couple of passes. Let's see here. This is 40 thousandths. Um, also have the tool can canted at 5 degrees, and we're using the WD-40. 40 thousandths is more than what my tool should be cutting, and I'll cover that more in video number 2, but I love the results. You see how aggressive that knurl is. So let's go ahead and review. This is uh, 2 and a half thousandths per rev, and then 14 thousandths per rev, 25 thousandths depth of cut. This is 25 thousandths depth of cut with the canted uh, tool. This one is the 25 thousandths, then 10 thousandths. That's the 10, 20, 30, 40. And that's the 40,000th canted with WD-40, best results. I love how just mean and aggressive that neural looks. I had a feeling somebody was going to ask, so I decided to go ahead and neural a large diameter piece of work. This is almost two inches of aluminum. 40,000th, uh, I think, is the depth of cut. And uh, everything else is the same. Two and a half thousandths per rev, 150 RPM using WD-40. Because the material is so has such a large diameter, the uh, surface speed is much higher, which means the knurling rollers are moving much faster. But it still works just as well. I didn't have any trouble with that. And I'm not sure what happened to my white balance on my camera, but this is a piece of brass. The only thing I had was this uh, beat-up 
brass drift. So I turned it down to get a smooth surface and, uh, it knurled just fine. Also 40,000 step of the cut, uh, five degree tool, everything else is the same. Uh, one thing I want to point out is, um, you see that kind of partial knurl, I guess, towards the upper part of the, the work that happens because of that five degree angle on the knurling tool. If you don't want that, then what you need to do is go five degrees the other way and knurl from the chuck out. Um, since this is just an academic video, I didn't really care, but it, you can't avoid getting that. Uh, something else I wanted to show you is that since this is a, this is not a material removal process, the diameter grows as we crush those valleys, it creates the peaks. So you can see here we go from one inch 988 up to two inch 012. Um, the, the material grows in diameter. There are formulas for that, although we're not going to be covering it in my next video uh, because I really didn't care. But I will be linking to some uh, fantastic resources as far as uh, knurling formulas um, are concerned if that kind of thing is, is you know, up your alley. Anyway, this is what the piece of brass looks like. Uh, it turned out pretty good. So anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks for checking out this video, guys. Uh, post your comments and questions below. Don't forget to you know subscribe so you can catch that knurling video number two for the math nerds. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.